It's where the big stories live. This is PLOS TV Africa, and you're watching Tea Time, the hottest entertainment news program on planet Earth. I'm Tukum Botairo, and I'm here with the forever chatty and elegant Elsie Godwin, and the forever outspoken and sometimes blunt Ife Oshunke. Hi, guys. Hey. Correction, always. Always blunt. blunt. OK, I, there I was <laughs> trying to be polite. <laughs> so it's good that you know, you've given the correction. <laughs> Elsie. Hi. Hi. Okay, so um, this story has been going on, I mean, since last night regarding uh, DJ XG, XG, who committed suicide yesterday. I don't know if you guys saw that. Yeah. Uh, it's a big story this morning. Mm. So, um, I don't know, it's sad, really, that um, another one bites the dust. Mm. That's a really sad one. Yeah, um, but let's not start this, you know, the show on a sad note. Did let's find talk anything? about the fact that the boy that came out to say David Doe has not given him his one million. <laughs> he collected after, it in cash. He collected, he collected it, it in, in cash. cash. Yes, yes. And he was and so excited. He was singing a new song. <laughs> so, oh. You know, I was telling my friends, I said, um, with, they were saying with this video now, mm -hmm. David uh, would never give this boy any money again. I said, knowing David and how proud he is, mm -hmm. he might even call the boy. He said, come and take your one million, but make a video and say I gave you five million. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? But I'm surprised he's still stuck no, to the one million. That. He won't do that. Why would David give someone one million and say, say I gave you five million? I don't think oh, that is part of his brand in no, any way. No, no. I don't think trust so. Trust me. Most people Why would saying, David oh, tell us he owns a private jet entitled. and we never see it anymore? Hi. Why would David tell us he gave Chum a Porsche and we'll never see it anymore. Why would David? Oh, you're saying, I go he, did, you're saying he didn't give Oops. her a Porsche? I'm just saying. Have, have you seen it? Have, back. have, have you also seen said, it? Uh, have you remember seen when it? he said his uh, dad used the private jet? Any problem? Uh, any problem? <laughs> Me. So you saying you're expecting him to give someone one million five and say million. the president to give, say five million is very unfair? No, that I'm just saying. Come on, man. It's just part of of what the brand, the marketing, no, the packaging. No, that is a fake life you are that, talking about. And uh, that is not what David is known for. So imagine, forget, I don't forget, I don't If he had done that, that, that would make headlines for weeks. But it's uh, not all about the headlines. And don't forget that at the event, he had already given out quite a lot of money already. So I think it's like over budget, even with regards to this one million. Because he was not the only person that he has given one million. Yeah, but he exactly. promised this guy, and this guy made a video saying that he has not gotten any All money. All he owes him is to give him the, the one, one million. He promised him. He doesn't owe him anything else. Oh, you get or to them. make him say, oh, mm -hmm. I collected one point five when I collected one million. Nah. No, people do it. People do it, but this is I'm saying this yeah. is not a Davido kind of work. thing. Well, All right. maybe, maybe you have a yes. personal relationship with Davido. I think we should move on. OK, so on today's episode, it's not just all about the stories. This morning, it's all about our students. Your guest, and if you're wondering who he is, it's time to give you a quick glimpse into his life. He's a multi award winning Nigerian actor, comedian, radio and TV presenter, writer, and compare. He has anchored many wedding ceremonies and other events in and outside Nigeria. He's also the first to publish a comedy magazine in Nigeria known as Laugh Matters. He hails from Abeokuta in Ogun State, and he usually refers to himself as CFR, the comedian of the Federal Republic, and now the first. GCON Grand Comedian of Nigeria, and with over a two, with over two hundred thousand followers on social media, ladies and gentlemen, allow me to introduce the good-natured, the good-hearted, and the good-humoured Benga Adeyinka the first. Woo! <laughs> uh, where do I get my one million from? <laughs> <laughs> yes. so, okay, so um, yeah. any way you want us to go about it, if mm -hmm. you say it's 10, I'll say it's 10. Just give me the one million. Just give me the one million dollars. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that, that dollars, was please, not naira. Dollars. <laughs> <laughs> because I need my assurance. Yes, yeah, so we all need it. And the private jet. Good to yes, have so. you here, sir. Same here, same yes, here. Good to have you. Um, let, me, let me greet my people first, because okay. you know I like to greet. Guys, mm -hmm. Sanunko Jama, Sunana Binga Adeinka Serikin Dayani. If you don't speak Aousa, Ndewo Afambu, Binga Adeinka Wan. If you don't speak Ibo, Obokia, Elimehi, Binga Adeinka. If you are Robo, Robo Wado, or Dem Benga Adeinka. If you're Yoruba, Ekaro, Ekasra, Ekale. My name, Olu Agbemiga, Jota, Loli, Minje. If you don't speak any of those languages, it doesn't matter. My name is Benga Adeinka the first. They call me the GCO and the Grand Comedian of Nigeria. If you speak Chinese, Nihao. Achwa. Wow. Cha. I'm glad you started with so many languages. So you're a polyglot. So how many languages do you speak? Oh, it's a hunger-inspired project. I speak as many as will bring money. But one thing I set out to do initially was to learn to speak, um, to speak, 
to say hello, my name is in a lot of languages. Okay. That way you break the ice. But I speak Yoruba, I speak English, I speak possible Igbo, possible Hausa, I speak French, I I understand a few more, but I think those are the ones I speak. Mm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Have you made any efforts whatsoever, you know, with regards to the minority languages here in Nigeria? Because you do all of the main languages. So are there any other minority languages that you've made an effort towards? Um, I, I, I can say hello in, um, in a few other states, in Akwa Ibom, okay. in, um, well, let me see. I, but what I do, basically, is when, whenever I travel out, and the reason I started with the CFR first um, was because I'm probably the first comedian to have worked in the 36 states of Nigeria. And so everywhere I go, I, I ask them, come, how do I say good morning? My name is uh, Bengade Inka, or good afternoon, or good mm -hmm. evening. And I, how do I say this and all that? And I, I learned all that. But you know, age is a bad thing. <laughs> 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 you start forgetting a lot of things. But then, uh, when push comes to shove, I will say it. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So. Okay. Let oh, me talk awesome. about your career. It's quite interesting. I mean, you're, should I say, the only one, as far as I'm concerned, that have taken this comedy and taken over southwest of Nigeria. You go to different states from Ogun State to Osho State. Last time was in Lori, mm -hmm. you know, and you keep expanding. If you did not do this, do you think it would have taken a toll on your career? And what is the, should I say, the Rationale. motivation behind it? Okay, let me, let me first start with why we started. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I grew up, okay, I, I, grew, I was born in Lagos, went to school in Lagos, did all my schooling in Lagos, but after my, my first work, after my first jump, I went for A-levels in Ibadan, the international school, and um, I, I got addicted to the work of Baba Salah, then mm -hmm. Jacob and Papa Lolo, the, the Southwest greats like I like to call them. And um, they, they influenced my career at the very early stage. So after coming into the limelight, there were a few of us doing, there are a few of us who are really not being tribal now in Yorubas. And um, everybody wanted to be worried. You worry where we come from. Uh, for worry, mm. you know, worry. Yeah. And I started getting scared when Yoruba boys started saying, you know, we worry people. We, and I felt someone needs to take charge. Mm. And so I decided, okay, what can I do about this? I was sleeping one day and something came to me. I said, why don't you do a Southwest tour? Abroad, you find a lot of comedians touring. And I, and, I, and I think that's the hallmark of comedy abroad. You, you do a lot of tours, so you go to the West Coast, go to the East Coast, go, go to all the coasts and end up in no coast, you know. Mm -hmm. So I, I decided, okay, I know Ibadan very well. Let me start with Ibadan. Ten years ago, nine years ago, ten, sorry, I've forgotten where in 2019, mm -hmm. we started um, Ibadan. And the first show was sold out. We had about 3,500 people wow. in the hall. We had more people outside who wanted to see the show. And that engineered something in me, told me there's a future for this. So we, we, from Ibadan, we went to, to um, Oshobo. From Oshobo, we went to Ilori. From Ilori, we went to Abeokuta. From Abeokuta, we went to, we, we started toying. And every year we'll do two. Uh, then we moved on to three. This year we're doing five. What did that teach me? That taught me that there were a lot of people yearning for premium quality entertainment outside Lagos. The, the, the mentality we all have in entertainment is it all starts and ends in Lagos. Mm, okay. Then everybody needed to come to Lagos to make it. Mm -hmm. But I realized that after a while, young boys started doing their own shows. And mm. people were now comfortable coming out to say, you know for Ibado, for Ibado. Mm -hmm. You know, ah, we Yoruba people. And you, 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 you don't find people doing Yoruba comedy a lot on Instagram, a lot. I'm not saying I'm responsible for that, but I, I want to be able to say that I'm one of those that, that, were, Pioneer. that were pioneers of people being comfortable okay. in expressing themselves in their modern terms and staying where they are 
to become comedy greats. Okay. okay. Yeah. All right, before we ask you our next question. He has not I'll... answered the second question. Do okay. Let's go on a quick break <laughs> and, yeah, go ahead. All right, so when we uh, return, we'll be asking him that second question, and we'll also be talking some more to the Grand Comedian of Nigeria, GCON, Benga Adeyinka the first. We'll be right back. It's where the big stories live. This is Plus TV Africa. When I did it, I was full on, hands on, on the whole project. So how did you that deal with it? All of that negative. I got depressed, obviously. Of duh. Haven't you heard? I've got two of the hottest topics currently trending on social media. If you've seen the word Senate trending on Twitter, that's because the Nigerian police force has gone Trump style. I probably haven't shared this with anyone, but I reckon I get about like a hundred people asking for help a day. That's a fact. I can prove that. Welcome back. You're watching Tea Time right here on Plus TV Africa. Up next is a furtherance of our conversation with award-winning actor, comedian, and compare, Benga Adeinka the first. So before the break, Elsie, you were asking him. Yeah, I asked already, so uh, let me did, rephrase did, it. Has it imparted my career? And if you would did it, not, would it, would it, it have, have taken it all on it? Okay, um, if I did not, would it have? Yes. Um, the beauty of every brand is that you have to redefine yourself. Um, I don't know if it would have affected it positively or negatively, but I guess if I kept doing what I kept doing, uh, what I was doing, the same way, it would have. Let's, yeah. let's not kid ourselves. Yeah. Uh, there, there are so many kids coming on the block every day who are on fire. Mm -hmm. And if, you, if I had not done this, maybe it would have affected me negatively. But then, doing it also affected me negatively because people started thinking I'd moved to Ibadan. I had moved to to Abe Okuta. I had moved. I do shows in Lagos, and people say, "Ah, ah, welcome. I hope you are finding Lagos <laughs> nice." <so." laughs> I said, "Lagos, come on." <laughs> you know, but what has it also done for me is um, is um, cemented me in the minds of more people. Is um, it's not easy. Um, not being vain. It's not easy being called the king of the southwest. Right. You know, it's not easy locking down shows outside Lagos nine years after. Every show we have, and uh, we like to brag about it, I'm sorry, is sold out. Mm. We, 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 we don't have the sponsorship of Lagos, but we have bigger eyeballs than Lagos would give us. And for me, that counts for a lot. Mm. Uh, it's affected me in that I don't get the endorsements I need to have gotten in Lagos, but the endorsements I have outside Lagos, it's okay for me, what do I need to do? My kids are practically out of the university. Um, my, 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 my needs are few, but I'm building a legacy. I'm building a name. Like, I know, God forbid, if I die now, my name will not be forgotten in those places. Mm -hmm. And it, which was one of the first things I set out to do. I, I asked myself, what can you do that when they mention the likes of Baba Salah, they would mention you too. And I think, in all humility, this is one of the things I've done. In fact, I think this is one of the biggest things I've done in my career. And that is why I'm still where I am now. Okay. So um, I'd like us to go political. Because it's so easy to criticize the government, their policies and everything. But if you get to be the president for, of Nigeria for just one year, what would you do differently? And how would you go about it? Hmm. If I become the president of Nigeria for one year, the first thing I'll do, I'll work with, with the Senate House of Reps to change a lot of the laws of Nigeria. My, my, I might be wrong. I think the solution to Nigeria's problem is allowing every state have autonomy. Let each state take care of itself. Okay. Let the center become less attractive. So once I become president, my, in fact, what I would use as my campaign mantra is a devolution of powers, is um, restructuring like everybody's saying now, and I won't pay lip service to it. I like, I would allow each state to take care of its power, take care of its police, take care of the basic human needs. And uh, the, I will, as president of the Federal Republic, mm -hmm. be a ceremonial president. Okay. I'll be in charge of the military, yes, okay. in case we have um, 
Insurgents. Insurgents and all that. If, but if the president of France, for instance, is coming to Nigeria for serious business, wants to do serious business with Lagos State or Ogo State or your state, he will come and see me shake hands. But if he's serious, he'll go and meet the governor of those states. I think, for me, that's the future of Nigeria. Okay. The future of Nigeria is having a weaker president and stronger, maybe we call them vice presidents, in each state. In each state. Mm. Do you not think by any chance that this might actually cause some division because division, each state exactly. is independent of the other? Do you not think it may bring about some division? Every, everything has is, is, um, pluses and is pluses and minuses. But for me, I think the pluses are more. <laughs> in, that, in that, see, I can't force you to develop at my pace. <laughs> You're drinking tea, she's having coffee, I'm having something, it might be vodka, it might be anything. You can't tell me to drink what you drink, mm -hmm. but when taxes, when a VAT comes, if I decide to drink vodka, and I decide vodka is wrong, you have no right to collect from the vodka VAT, mm -hmm. which is what is happening in Nigeria now. Right. When, um, if, if I have the power to generate, if I have the resources to generate power, if I generate it, you don't have to force me to put it into the national grid. Mm -hmm. I should generate it for my people. If all I have in my area of influence, like they have in Ekiti, are natural resources on the ground, mm -hmm. you don't have to force me to, to come and collect oil money in Abuja. Or I don't have to force you to give me oil money. Let me concentrate on the bitumen, the bugs of might, all those might, might, might that is under the ground mm -hmm. that will make me mighty. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, we need, we need to restructure our minds mm -hmm. too. The mindset. The, the, my biggest prayer every day, every time I see we have a problem in Nigeria, is I pray that our oil finishes. <laughs> <laughs> then we would then be, okay. All right, so still on politics, the, um, there's one of the questions that has been on my mind that I wanted to ask you, because this is like a fellow uh, person in the industry. So this is Omotola Jalade Ekende, who comes out to say not too long ago that, you know, she thinks Nigeria is ready for a female president. And she also says uh, that... Um, we shouldn't really vote for people just because you know they're, they're young, young. Uh, that we should vote for people based on their track record so i want to get your own response uh to one you know having a female president and then to you know voting for young people what's your take on okay two amotola things? i love you i love you so much i've known amotola for eons but she's young <laughs> <laughs> My take on female presidency, anybody can be president. I think it's wrong for us to say, oh, because she's female, mm -hmm. she should be president. I even think that, that is sexual abuse. Is, um, gender. Gender. Is, is, is sexist. Yeah. Yeah. Is, gen is gender abuse. Mm -hmm. um, she's a woman, I'm a man. We are equal. Let her tell me what she wants to do. Let me, let me say what I want to do. Whoever comes across better should be voted for that aside. So I disagree with her on that. That it's time for a female president. It's always been time for a female president. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. From 1960, we've always been ripe for a female president. So, but are the female president, uh, presidential candidates ready? Mm -hmm. That's another thing. Then, two, not too young to run, not uh, we're on TV. There's some things I don't want to say. No, go on. Those are things <laughs> yeah, no. That's why you... Yeah. Uh, excuse my French. To hell with that. Oh, my God. See, competence is not a function of age. I know people will say, oh, it's because it's close to these people and all that. Competence is not a function of age. You cannot say young is good and old is bad and kill the old and let the young live. There are a lot of young people in this government. Mm -hmm. I said this in a, in a BlackBerry group I belong to, and it took people a while to understand what I was, where I was getting to. So maybe because, maybe since I'm saying that, people understand. The fact that this man is younger than me does not mean that if he becomes president of Nigeria, he will do better than I will do. The fact that I'm older than you guys does not mean that, I assume, does not mean that I'm more competent than you guys. The fact that I can operate Twitter, mm -hmm. And on social media. On social media. Does not mean that I'm an illiterate. See, what we need in a leader is one, compassion. Is two, focus. Three, programs. If a young 21-year-old can give us that, mm -hmm. I'm all for it. If a 90, 90, 100-year-old man can give it to us, 
I'm all for it. I would never vote for anybody based on age or, or, gender. or gender. I will never do that. But you see, the reality of it is this. Young people, I'll count myself as one of us now, won't, we, we mouth off Obama, Macron, in, in, in the UK, mm -hmm. Theresa, Theresa May, May is a woman. With Nigeria, oh, I, oh God, I've lost hope for this country. I hate this country. Mm -hmm. We want the glory, but we're not ready for the work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Obama did not start as an upstart. Go and read all these people who talk. Go and read all his books. Mm -hmm. Macron had been in politics for God knows how long. Mm -hmm. You cannot tell me that just because you are young, mm -hmm. because you are one of us, mm -hmm. because you wear jeans, I should vote for you. No. Mm -hmm. You have to be grounded. One, what structures do you have? Politics is structure. Mm -hmm. You want to be president of Nigeria. I know you in Lagos. Do they know you in Ibadan? Do they know you in Ogun? Mm -hmm. Do they know you in Kwara? Now, I'm mentioning these places because they are close to Lagos. Now, do they know you in Sokoto? Do they know you in Katsina? You don't want to be president of social media. You want mm. to be president of the Federal Republic, Republic. of Nigeria. Okay. Over 180 million people. Yeah. How many of these 180 million people know you? Mm -hmm. I have to know you. I have to know what you stand for, for me to vote for you. But in Nigeria, mm -hmm. we are used to um, projects that put us in trouble. Yeah. I won't mention him. The first project was, oh, he had no shoes. So we quickly voted and we, we entered Gobe. The next project was, oh, he will not steal your money. Where, where we are. The next project is, oh, not too young to run. We'll now vote for one young man. And Nigeria, no. Let's do things right. Okay. Any party that is interested in winning, I don't care what party it is. It could be MPJ, PRP, MIO. Okay. Mention all these acronyms now. You'll be sure there's a political party for it. Yes. <laughs> You're sure. Okay. What we need you to do is forget presidency for now. Start... Start the sensitizing the people. You, you have four years of not wanting to be president. Go on that social media, tell your people, these are our plans. Mm -hmm. When I become president, this is what we'll do. Okay. When I become this, this is what we do. 90% of people on social media don't have PVCs. Mm -hmm. Get them to register. Get yeah. them to, to come out and vote. That way, a young okay. person can become president. All right, thank you so much. That was quite a, an answer for um, <laughs> the quick break. When we come back, it will be time for more questions and answers with the Grand Comedian of Nigeria, Binga Adeyinka the First. That's all coming up when Tea Time on Plus TV Africa continues. What we do not understand, we will stigmatize. What you can see is the remaining of the tanker that exploded. The software equally confessed. A 500 there are the collector. If no talk, they will beat you. Now two to other five and they Welcome back. It's still tea time right here on Plus TV Africa. And we're swiftly moving on with our interesting conversation with comedian, actor, and compare, Benga Adeyinka the first. And I think uh, Ife has a question for you. Yeah, so um, the last session was really <laughs> intense. <Yeah. laughs> so, on a lighter note, yeah. I know you're a stand fan of Arsenal. Mm. How did it feel losing to Liverpool over the weekend? Okay, people who ask this question, <laughs> I, I tell them, how are you feeling when we were going unbeaten? <laughs> how, were, how were you feeling when we were the invincible? Mm. See, me, I'm a realistic supporter of Arsenal. Mm -hmm. When we win, I shout to the high heavens. When we lose, I take it on the, on the chain. chain and I move on. 
Um, I'd almost gotten electrocuted because of Arsenal, uh, supporting Arsenal. Yeah. So now I, I'm calmer. But how did it feel? Felt felt terrible. Felt um, felt bad because we have confirmed ourselves as the wives, official <laughs> housewives of uh, Liverpool. Liverpool. Mm -hmm. But I'm happy we came back 4 1 this weekend. But mm -hmm. people. Uh, and they send out people like you. <laughs> <laughs> we say, so who did you play? Who did you play? Who did you play? But um, when everybody was shouting Wenger out, Wenger out, the question I asked was, then who? I, I knew that no change happens overnight. Mm. And um, I knew that we we're going to have a few teething problems. Mm -hmm. So when Unai Emery came, like Emery, like some of my friends would call him, <laughs> when he came, and we started having all these wonderful results and all that. Mm -hmm. I was happy, but I was still skeptical. Mm -hmm. I was happy in that, wow, wow. So that means that Wenger was really a problem. That means that we could have done. But I was skeptical in that, hmm. Person where they box, they punch them, they punch them. Then they punch them, they punch them. They go punch them too. Mm -hmm. When they punch us, what's going to happen? We got a bad punch. But... No, no tata for you. Okay, let me quickly I'm ask. Still like going since like we're talking about uh, <laughs> football, um, I just quickly wanted to find out: Have you always been an Arsenal fan? Because I know at some point in time uh, there was people, one time when they were quite uh, successful, people, and when, then a lot of when people, Chelsea wins, they run to Chelsea. When that's I said, the thing, glory okay, hunters. Now, let me so. tell you. Let me, let me tell you what my problem was. I almost ran. I won't lie. <laughs> I almost ran, but my mouth put me in trouble. Okay. I okay. I started supporting Arsenal when Kano joined Arsenal, and when he left, I couldn't leave because. In all honesty, I love the philosophy of the of the club. I love the the way we play football. Even when we are losing, we play attractive. And people say, where where are the trophies? And I ask those who say, where are the trophies? Where is your own trophy? Liverpool won a trophy last before my ancient grandmother was born. <laughs> Exaggerating though, yeah. but. I couldn't leave because I'd made so much noise about being a gunner. I, th I remember in, my, in the early days of my career, I used to wear an Arsenal jersey, and that was the, those were the days when we were invincible, when we were beating everybody beatable, and our only problem was Champions League. But I got stuck. I'm happy I got stuck. The only problem I have is my son. My son, I got to be an Arsenal Arsenal supporter. Every time I travel, I buy mm -hmm. in bed sheets, I buy in school bags, mm -hmm. and when we lose, I say, ah, oh, now me put this boy for his <laughs> trouble. <laughs> my, my daughter, for, my daughter, my first daughter mm -hmm. is uh, the rebel, rebel in the family. She supports Man U. So when they are winning, we're always in trouble. But now that they lose, she is in trouble. <laughs> so I never thought, I thought of leaving, but I couldn't leave, and I'm, I'm still okay. here. Okay, let's All right. talk about um, uh, We're yeah. out of time, actually. So final question, okay, I want. My final question. Um, sorry? We have you, oh. you just said. Sorry. We've, <laughs> sorry, Elsie. <laughs> we're really out of time. Wow. Sorry. So, so unfortunately. Elsie, don't worry. I'll let you ask yes. me off air. Off air, Then yes. we can treat it. <laughs> <laughs> That's where we're going to uh, wrap up on Tea Time this morning. Sorry, time won't let us go any further. Join us this afternoon, though, for a brand new episode of the program. Until then, a big thank you to my co-anchors, Ife and Elsie, the entire production team, and last but most certainly not least, our studio guest, the Grand Comedian of Nigeria, GCON, Winga Adeyinka I. I'm Tokumbo Taiwo saying thanks for watching. Good day, goodbye, and God bless. <laughs>